myself. My name is Sharon Coulter. I've been working here at Premier for a combination of seven years. Um, I take incoming health, uh, help desk calls, and I also do on-site consulting. So if I'm not out on a client site, I, you might get me if you call in for some help. Um, I've used bank reconciliation in the real world in Great Plains, um, so I might have some insights there. It's a smaller module. This session might go pretty <laughs> That might be a good thing and it might be a bad thing. So. But if you, all of you on the phone that uh, have, are joining on the GoTo meeting, uh, just keep your phones muted so we don't get your background noise. And then <coughs> during question and answers, go ahead and unmute yourself if you have some questions. Hey. So bank reconciliation in Great Plains um, allows you to reconcile transactions that are coming across from other modules. You can also enter in transactions <laughs> to other modules. <coughs> you can have unlimited tricks. Um, and we'll go through all of those setups and, and those windows. Cover today are um, just the bankrupt setup and the, what you can do to in that window to customize it to your business. Set up some new checkbooks. Um, how to handle the beginning balances if you're setting up a new checkbook. Um, go over how bank transactions affect the GL versus the checkbook balance and when that all happens. Um, Go over your typical bank transactions and transfers. The diff look at the different types of transactions that you can record and the cash receipts that you would record in bank rec. Uh, look at doing miscellaneous checks, um, bank deposits, the different types of deposits that you make in GP. Go over the reconciliation window look at a couple of smart lists that might help you with your bank reconciliation and then look at some help messages. <coughs> That's our agenda. Hopefully we can get that all covered. I'm sure we will. So the first thing So if we look at all the integration points, um, when you've got bank rec, Everything or entered uh, in sales order processing or receivables that have to do with cash or a checkbook automatically come into the bank rec module. So bank rec is kind of like a sub ledger to your general ledger. Um, purchasing, if you any checks that you cut, payables, uh, payroll. Anything associated with the checkbook will flow into the bank rec module. Um, at different points, the general ledger gets updated with that information, and the checkbook gets updated with that information. So if you can see by the, the graphic, the general ledger is the last thing that gets updated. So all the arrows are going to the general ledger. It doesn't write back to bank reconciliation if I do a general journal straight, you know, directly to my cash account. So anything affecting your cash account that will show up on your statement, um, you'll want to take care of in bank rec if it's not coming from another module. <coughs> now let's Okay, so in Great Plains, the first thing that we're going to look at is the setup window for bank reconciliation. 
and that's under financial. Let me shrink up some of my panes here. Setup and bank reconciliation. There's not a lot to this window, but you can customize it a little bit. Uh, the first item on there, the first field is the next number. That's just an incrementing number, and it's just going to tag itself onto the code, depending on what kind of transaction you are doing. Um, so it's just going to automatically increment, and it's going to become your audit trail code. So if you're familiar with your audit trail code and great finds, it's that long string of numbers and letters. Uh, the transaction type section. Yeah. On the, on the numbers, you just gonna, it's just counts now. Mm -hmm. Stop and start repeating stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because this one isn't restricted by a length. It okay. just tags it to the so end and it keeps going. You want to change it? You want to change it back to one after so many years? Um, you, you can as long as stuff is in history and removed from history, or else you're going to have some problems because your audit trail code is your unique identifier throughout the system. So you know how big that zero field is. I mean, it's just going to tab two on the end of that, and it's just going to keep going. Okay. So I could do a deposit, and it would be deposit 0002. And then I could do a receipt, and it's going to be receipt 0003. So it's, it's not going to be incremental by type, but for the transaction. But if you can notice in here, um, I can change the name of these fields if I don't like uh, the default ones. For instance, you may not do any withdrawals, but you might do a lot of wires out of an account or something like that. You can change this. And I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, so what I've done is in GP, now when somebody goes and enters a transaction, the withdrawal type, it's going to reduce my checkbook balance rate, is now going to say wire trend. And my audit code is going to be start with WTF. Because, oh, that didn't look very good, does it? <laughs> Let's do this. Um, because it, uh, it's still going to be a withdrawal. I can't change the type, but I can say we're never going to do a withdrawal, but I can customize that for a transaction that we do all the time. So it will be in that system for the user to use. You can do that for you know, any one of these. The increase adjustment, decrease adjustment, or transfer. The bottom transaction types are found within the reconciliation window itself. So you can also change these. For instance, other income, I could change it uh, to miscellaneous. Or miscellaneous expense. I just hit save. Sorry about that. So any so now when I do reconciliation, if I'm doing an adjustment, it I'm going to see those descriptions versus the other. So you can this is the amount of customization out of the box that you can do for bankrupt. Um, you'd always want to maintain history um, unless you're You've got space restrictions. That's really not an issue nowadays with how cheap uh, space is. Uh, the default checkbook, if you just have one checkbook, you can pull that in there, and it's just going to default in your window, so you don't have to select it. If you have multiple, multiple checkbooks, I would just leave it alone. The user-defined one and two are uh, additional fields on your checkbook maintenance. So when you set up a checkbook, if there's some a field that you want to track that's not on the checkbook window, you can set up one here. So I'm going to set up, I'm going to use two. I'm going to call it uh, account type. So that's it for the setup window.
Any questions so far? Pretty basic? Okay. So let's set up a new chat book. Welcome. So you can have a limited checkbooks in Great Plains. Um, the one thing that I can advise you on is if I get a statement, I have one cash account for it, and I have one checkbook for it. So you've got a one to one relationship because when you're reconciling your checkbook, uh, you would want to be able to easily print out a detailed ledger for your cash account so that you can make sure that you're reconciling to the GL. Even though I you know, go through and reconcile all my transactions that hit bankrupt, um, someone may be able to just code a, they may have done a journal entry directly to the general ledger account or your cash account. It's not going to roll back into re um, bankrupt. So a one-to-one -one relationship is going to be the easiest for you. I have seen people that will have different checkbook IDs and update the same cash account. And I'm not saying it can't be done. It's just going to be really hard. It's going to be more difficult on you reconciling, getting the two tied together. Because if you look at some of these, <coughs> if you look at this, it tells me what my cash account balance is for this checkbook ID. So if I've got this cash account tied to another checkbook ID, I'm going to see that same balance on the other checkbook. Because that cash account balance is coming from my general ledger as of whatever's been posted as of this minute. So um, let's just say I'm setting up a new one. Yeah. You just give it a unique ID, give it a description to help you identify what it is. And currency, rate type, deposit rate type, those all deal with multi currency. So I don't know if you do deal with any currency besides US dollars. But whatever's assigned to this currency is what this checkbook is. And then you just uh, tie a cash account. If you can see, it's required, required field. And this is in your checkbook, this is where you get the next check number and your next deposit number. Uh, it's not set up in payables or payrolls. Some people look for the next checkbook or you know the next check number in there, but it's not. It's controlled by your checkbook. I would probably recommend that your checks, I don't think the bank accepts anything bigger like a seven digit number or something like that. So having all that's not gonna be um, be helpful for you. You'd have to check with your bank, but I don't think they, I don't think they go very big. Um, the deposit number really doesn't matter as far as the length. That's just an internal number that's just going to increment every time I do a deposit. What I'd like to tell you about this field, though, um, both of them actually, this field will at this time, since I've made it a certain length, once I hit. 9,999,999, I've used up my range. It's not going to automatically bump up to the next one. So if I try to print a check, 